Hello and welcome to another video. Uh, in this one we're going to be talking about typing again. I will link the original MyPy video in the description below. Uh, but the question that I get asked a lot is, hey, when I'm finding my annotations, I often get errors either like name error or type error uh, from the annotation itself. How do I avoid these? I know the annotation is correct, but the code won't allow it. Um, so uh, yeah, I'll explain two different ways to tackle that based on what Python version you're working in. Okay, so let me show you two examples of cases where this happens a lot. Uh, the first, and I think probably the more common case, is when defining a class that has a method which returns an instance of the class itself. So I use this pattern a lot where I have, actually, let's just make a class. Self x int none, self.x equals x. We'll make a wrapper as well, just so that it is readable. Stir return type self dot name uh, x equals well we could just do self dot x and uh, I often make a separate constructor function for the uh, for the class itself as a class method so I'll often do class method def you know make one and actually maybe our our wrapper here will use make as well uh, and you know, usually I'll have some sort of special side effect here. Uh, and this is actually, this is actually the part where we're gonna have trouble, but we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Um, but you know, maybe this will have some sort of side effect before constructing the class, but this is a silly example. So we're just, we're just gonna keep the example silly. And if we were to print c.make2, uh, and we run this, you'll see the error that people run into a lot, which is that this name is not defined. And the reason this name is not defined is the class name doesn't become a global variable until after the class body finishes, so down down here. So at this point in execution, C is not a name that exists. And so what we need to do here is use what's called a forward annotation. And there are two ways to do this. One of them is outlined in PEP 484, which talks about uh, forward annotations, and the other is outlined in uh, PEP. I don't remember the PEP number, but <laughs> we'll talk about the specifics of that PEP in a bit. Um, but the 484 way is to quote this annotation, just put quotes around it. This will turn it into a string. Uh, type checkers know that when they see a string, they should convert it back into the actual type. And so this allows you to, you know, forward annotate this. And we'll actually set up MyPy to show that as well. Install MyPy. We can do, uh, well, first let's show that the code works. So if we run this code now, you can see that we get back a C object and has this particular representation down here. And if we call reveal type, which is a way to inspect what you know your type checker thinks about this particular thing, and if we run mypy on that, you'll see that mypy believes that it is a C type. So it, it knows that it, uh, this string refers to this class here. Now I think this this string syntax is a little bit clunky and you know, others, <laughs> others agree. And so in Python 3.7, they added a new future flag. And I, I will link the video about future in the description as well. Um, they added a new future flag, which allows you to use this syntax, but magically makes all of the attribute or all of the annotations for it annotations. And the future flag for that is from future import annotations. And this is only available in Python 3.7 or above. So if you're targeting Python 3.6, you're stuck using the strings thing, unfortunately. Uh, but you'll see here that, you know, MyPy, MyPy knows this still, and we can now run this while still having this blank thing here. Now, what future annotations is doing behind the scenes is it is turning all of these into strings. So even the ones that we didn't need to string it's, it's turning these all implicitly into string literals, which means they're not evaluated. This has another benefit in that, you know, if your annotation is expensive to compute, maybe the, the brackets or, or whatever else you're doing in your annotation has some sort of runtime cost. Uh, from future import annotations will avoid all of that runtime cost. And it can add up depending on, you know, what you're doing. Interestingly enough, in my text editor, I actually found a a performance problem where 8% of the rendering of my text editor was spent just computing annotations. And so quoting one of my annotations sped up sped up my text editor by 8%. Um, but of course it was in a very, very tight loop and you're very, very unlikely to spend a lot of time in annotations other than import time. 
but yeah, this this can enable you to use the bear name in 3.7 and above. Um, the other case where you might need forward annotations is using a generic type from the standard library uh, that doesn't define the generic type itself. So one example of that is the Q class. So say we had get Q and this returns Q dot Q. I don't know, you'd probably do something more interesting with it. Um, and to do your proper type annotation here, you would want to say that this is a queue of, say, integers. Uh, and without, I'm actually going to comment all of this code out down here. Um, I still have not fixed the trailing white space in the comment stuff yet. Uh, but anyway, we're going to make a get queue function, which returns a generic integer queue um, from this function. If we run this in Python 3, you'll see, oops, this should say q.q, q.q. That was not what I wanted to demo. Uh, you'll see that we get a type error that type object is not subscriptable. Uh, now in Python 3.9 and above, this will be subscriptable, so this will just work. Uh, but alas, we are not in 3.9, we're in 3.8. But you can use the same trick with uh, from future, from future import annotations, and so that that works uh, just as well. You can also, you know, if you need to use the quoting trick as well. That will also work. And MyPy knows about this reveal type. Get Q, see MyPy, TNAPPY. It knows that it's a Q of integers. Uh, but anyway, that's forward annotations as well as the from future import annotations. Uh, that's how you solve this problem. Now, <laughs> um, I got a terrible idea and wanted to try and enable the future flag in older versions of Python. Uh, in particular, Python 3.6. So let's actually make a 3.6 virtual env, dash p, Python 3.6. And note that 3.6 does not support future annotations natively. Uh, but I made a terrible thing <laughs> called future annotations, uh, similar to annotation, similar to how, uh, oh, I forgot to activate virtual env, <laughs> similar to how future f strings works. And it's, <laughs> Just to show that it doesn't work, first off, we're going to run python 3.6 t.py, and you'll see, again, we get that type error that we got before. But if you add this very special comment here, and this is terrible, uh, the way this works is, is terrible. If you add this very, very special comment here, coding future annotations, and we remove reveal type down here because that's not a thing, uh, you'll see that it suddenly works. <laughs> and... Uh, the way that this is working, let's actually uncomment the rest of this code as well. Uh, comment, because uh, this this example works as well. And so you can see, you know, that that also works. And the way this works is uh, this special comment causes Python to rewrite the source code as it parses this module uh, using a special encoding that I've done uh, in this future annotations project. And you can actually kind of see what it does behind the scenes by using this executable future annotations show. And you'll see that it has just gone through and quoted all of these arguments. It also has to blank this out due to a circular dependence on encodings, but <laughs> you can ignore that. Um, but you can see it's just turned all of these annotations into forward annotations by quoting them. And so that's how that works. <laughs> but that's, that's a huge hack. Anyway, don't, don't worry about this thing. I made it just because I wanted to see if it was possible. Uh, but anyway, thank you for watching. If you guys have additional stuff you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. Uh, but thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.